Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Planty part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Bryophytes also subclassification was needed because in bryophytes also it was seen that there were two categories into which they can be classified because those two categories differ from each other in many important characteristics. So what were those two categories? Liverworts and mosses. So these were the two subclassification of bryophytes. So let us study the characteristics of liverworts. Now when I talk about liverworts, almost around 9000 species of liverworts exist on this earth. So can you imagine how huge that number is? Now when you talk about their appearance, some of them exist as leafless thallus, that means without leaves, whereas most of them exist as leafy thallus, so they have leaves. Talking about their habitat, they prefer moist and shady habitats. They do not want too much of light. Plant body is thalloid, that is not too much of distinction between the different parts. However, they have a stem-like structure and they also have tiny leaf-like structures. So the body differentiation is obviously far better than the thallophytes, but still it is not too much distinct as well. There are two types of liverworts depending upon whether they have leaves or they do not have leaves. One is thallos liverworts and the other one is leafy liverworts. So the thallos liverworts are those which do not have the leaf-like structures. So here you can see a picture which display the thallos liverworts. So the example of a thallos liverwort is Lunularia cruciate. So here in that picture, in the picture you can see that Lunularia. So here you see these structures which are displayed, they are not, they do not carry anything like leaf. So they do not have that kind of structure. It is just the thallus which is displayed. That is why they are called thallus liverworts. The other one is leafy liverworts. Here you can see, you can actually see a stem-like structure like this. And on this you see small leaf-like structures like this. So these are known as leafy liverworts. So example of a leafy liverwort would be Scipania species. Now, these leafy liverworts look quite similar to mosses. We spoke about mosses, right? So, these liverworts look quite similar uh, to mosses. However, there are differences between mosses and these leafy liverworts. So, when I say thallus, you understand what it is? It is the plant body. It is generally flattened and sometimes it is ribbon-like with a branching structure. So this is about the basics of liverworts. Now, considering examples of liverworts, Mercantia is a very popular example of liverwort. This is how they look like. So here you can see in the picture, they have got this umbrella kind of a structure. So Mercantia, Russia, this is how it looks like, Porella. So here you see, you do not, they do not exactly look like a plant with a distinct stem and distinct leaves, but they at least have some basic structure of leaves and stems. So these are some of the examples of liverworts. Now let us talk about reproduction in liverworts. First we talk about the asexual reproduction. What are the different ways by which they reproduce asexually? So first is fragmentation of thalli. Thalli is nothing but the plural of thallus. So fragmentation again the same thing here what happens is uh, the thallus of the plant so any part of the plant maybe older plant parts will die off so that newer branches become separated by specialized whip like structures or by leaves that drop off the plant. For example thallus is this plant body so if any part of that plant body gets separated from the plant and if it reaches somewhere else, it can give rise to a new thallus altogether. So that is known as fragmentation. It is seen in plants like Risia. So small part of the thallus will separate once it reaches the soil. Now, how will it reach the soil? It might reach the soil by wind, air or rain. So then they can develop into a complete new liverwort. The next mode of asexual reproduction is gamete formation. 
So what are these gamete? Now gamete are the propagative structures in thallus liverworts. This is a very important term. Gamete, what are gamete? You have here in this picture, you can see some cup shaped structures, right? So these cup shaped structures are known as gamete cups and inside these cups you have the gamete. So gamete are nothing but uh, spores. I mean not exactly spores but it, these are also similar to spores. So each cup will have numerous gamete. Now these gamete will be released from the cups when water droplets splash into the cups. For example these are like cups containing lot of gamete. Now when water falls on it these uh, these uh, gamete might, might come out and when they come out they get transported to some other sites where they grow into new plants or new individuals. So that is how asexual reproduction happens by with the help of gamete. So what are gamete? Are, these are propagative structures in thallus liverworts. So these are mainly the two ways by which liverworts reproduce asexually. Now let us talk about the sexual reproduction in liverworts. So sexual reproduction definitely involves gametes. So here we need two gametes for fusion. So here male and female organs can be on the same thalli or on different thalli. So it is not important that in one thalli itself you should have the male, male organ as well as the female organs. They can be on the same plant or they can be on different plants. For example, so let us now discuss the sexual reproduction in liverworts. So for sexual reproduction, as we know, we need two gametes for fusion. So fusion of gametes will give rise to the new organism. So here we need a male organ and a female organ so that the male organ will produce the male gamete, female organ will produce the female gamete. Now it is not necessary that the male and the female organs are on the same thalli. They can be on the same thallus, they can be on different thalli as well. Now mostly what happens is that in case of leafy liverwort, so if you consider the leafy liverwort, it is seen that the male and female structures are on different plants or are on different thalli. But if you consider the thallus liverworts, it is seen that the male and female structures are produced on bodies which are umbrella like structures or on leaves. So they are produced on umbrella-like structures in case of thallus liverworts. So here we will see how does the process of sexual reproduction take place. So let us have a look at that. So in this case what will happen? So there will be a gametophyte again. Gametophyte is that part of the plant which produces gametes. So the gametophyte will produce the gametes. And then these gametes will undergo fusion. So when they undergo fusion, what will happen? Zygote will be formed. Now these zygote will grow to form the sporophyte. And then this sporophyte will produce the spores. And then these spores will again germinate to form the gametophyte. So this is basically the cycle here also. Now these gametes which we are talking about are the haploid gametes. But the zygote which is formed here is a diploid zygote. Again the sporophyte which is formed by the growth of the zygote is again a diploid phase. Now how do these sporophyte survive? Now this sporophyte remains attached to the gametophyte because everything is happening on the gametophyte because there is a male gametophyte, there is a female gametophyte. As I told you before also that the male gametes from the male gametophyte is carried to the female gametophyte. So the, where is the fusion taking place? The fusion is taking place in the female gametophyte. So the zygote is formed in the female gametophyte. Now the zygote grows to form a sporophyte. So where is the sporophyte formed? It is formed on the female gametophyte. So it remains attached to the female gametophyte. So the sporophyte will receive all its nutrition from the female gametophyte. And then it will produce the spores. These spores will germinate to form the gametophyte again. So this gametophyte is a haploid state.
So in this case, which phase do you think is the dominant phase of the life cycle? Is it the gametophyte or the sporophyte? So here gametophyte is the dominant phase because it is long lived. It is the one gametophyte is the plant which we see. Right, the plant which we see as lipovot, that is nothing but gametophyte because they are capable of producing the gametes. But sporophyte is an intermediate stage in life cycle which doesn't last for a longer time. It just lasts for some time and then it produces spores. So the sporophyte phase is gone. So we can say that haploid gametophyte is the dominant phase of life cycle in this case. So this is a very important thing to remember. So you should know the life cycle of each type of plant and you should also know which is the dominant phase of the life cycle. So this is the basic life cycle. Now here also there are a couple of things that we should we need to know. So what did we study here about the sporophyte? The sporophyte remains attached to gametophyte so that is one thing to be noted here now when we look at the structure of the sporophyte so let us suppose now let us suppose if this is a sporophyte so when we look at the structure of a sporophyte it is divided into three parts one is capsule the next is seta and the bottom portion is food. So these are the three parts of a sporophyte. Sporophyte is nothing but it is like a small embryo kind of thing. The zygote grows to form the sporophyte. The bottom part is called food. The topmost part is called capsule and the middle part or the body is known as seta. So from where are these pores produced? These pores are produced in the Capsule. So spores are present in the capsule part of the sporophyte, right? So I think the sexual reproduction cycle of liverworts is also clear. Okay. So this is how it looks like. This is the archegonophore. Archegonophore is the female part. So this is the female gametophyte and it will produce the female gamete. That is the egg. This is the male gametophyte so it will produce the male gametes and the male gametes will be carried from the male gametophyte to the female gametophyte with the help of water. So let us now talk about the sporophyte and the gametophyte in little more detail. So here this picture will illustrate sporophyte and gametophyte in a nice way. So sporophyte is the diploid stage as I told just now. It develops from the zygote. So here in this picture you can see this portion is the gametophyte that is the original plant. So it produced gametes. The gametes fused they formed zygote. Zygote grew to form a sporophyte. So sporophyte is still attached to the gametophyte. So it begins to grow out on top of the archegonium on the female gametophyte plant. As I said, it will grow on top of the female gametophyte plant. Now, considering its structure, as I said, it has three parts, foot, seta and capsule. So foot is the bottommost part of the sporophyte. Seta is the body of the sporophyte and capsule is the head of the Sporophyte. So this is capsule, this is seta, and this is food. So food anchors to gametophyte. So food actually helps to uh, keep it attached to the gametophyte. Seta is the long erect stalk. It transfers water and nutrients from gametophyte. As I said, the sporophyte will receive all its nutrition from the gametophyte. So the stalk or the tube-like structure will help the nutrients to move up. Capsule is the head portion of the sporophyte where spores are produced. So this is the structure of a sporophyte. So here in this picture you can actually see the sporophytes. It is a real picture of um, liverworts carrying the sporophytes. You see these brown colored spores. So this is how they look like in real life. So they remain attached to the gametophyte. So here you can see this is the gametophyte green colored structures. On that you have uh, the stalk or the seta and this is the spore. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.